If you've been following my channel, then you'll know that I recently got a slab saw. And if you don't know what a slab saw is, it is a wonderful machine that helps you cut rocks open to see what's inside. So you know I've been cutting open all of the beautiful gems that I have acquired over these years. However, there's one problem. When you cut with a slab saw, it gives you a nice flat surface, which is beautiful when it's wet. But the second it dries, it becomes kind of dull. You can see some of the saw marks sometimes, and the rocks really just kind of lose their beauty. Well, some of their beauty, because let's be honest, all rocks are beautiful. So I thought to myself, you know what, I'll just buy what all the rock hounds have and get like a cab king or something that I can polish my rocks with. Now mind you, I've spent a lot of money on this slab saw, and when I looked at the cost of cab kings, I said, okay, new plan. <laughs> and that is to use resin on rocks. I know, crazy, right? I figure if we do a nice thin layer of resin just on the flat surface of the rock, you're going to be able to see all of the beautiful details inside, nice and shiny, just like if you were to polish it. Plus then you don't have to spend a bunch of time hand polishing each stone. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's check it out. So here are all the pieces that I would like to add resin to. So I have done a few test projects in the past just to see how they would turn out and the different types of rocks that I might be able to do it with. And the ones that I have in here are all really good contenders. This one right here, Cooper Moon won on our rock giveaway over on Patreon, so I'm pretty excited to be sending this his way. And if you want to earn cool rocks, make sure you head on over to Patreon and check it out. Now, a part of the challenge of these pieces is going to be that the majority of them do not lay flat on the table, so if I were to just put resin on this like this, all the resin would just run off onto the table. So I need to find a way to make these like flat so that no resin runs off like that. All right, I think I have an idea. I'm gonna be putting it in this basket because obviously I don't wanna get it on my nice new table set up here. And I was thinking in the bottom of the basket, maybe putting sand, but then I thought like if these wiggled around too much, maybe a little bit of sand would get on the rock and then it would get in the resin and that would not be good. So I thought instead, what if I use these rocks? Now, this premium aquarium gravel may look familiar to you because it is what I actually use in place of ceramic media when I'm tumbling my rocks. The reason I do that is it's a lot cheaper and you can get so much of it and then end up having beautiful tumbled rocks in the end, like this. Eh, isn't that cool? So I got all those little tumbled rocks in the end. I have them all over in this little jar right now. Anyways, I think it's a good idea. So another method that I tried to do was use some foam, but for one part of this element, you need a bit of fire. And uh, I realized when the fire was next to the foam, it started burning the foam and you know, that's just not really a good thing. All right, let's get these set up in our rocks. a little bit of fallout because I chose a basket with a bunch of holes in it, but they're looking good in our basket now. So as I was putting them in and kind of pushing them down, they would occasionally kind of jostle the other ones out of place. So I kind of had to go back through and just make sure they were all flat or at least as flat as I can get them. So here are all of our beautiful contenders. Look at these bad boys. They are gonna look so pretty. So here's the resin that we're gonna use. Um, I will have it linked on my Amazon if this is something that you would like to try. Uh, I can also link these rocks too, the ones at the very bottom. And I also use them for ceramic media if you'd like as well. So we have our part A of the resin and the part B, the hardener, I guess. This is a medicine cup from my children's medicine. Don't worry, they have plenty of these uh, that I use just so that I could help measure. What you have to do is measure it 50-50 exactly Exactly, and they're very specific about it being exact. So when I did it the first time, I did up to five milliliters with part A, and then up to 10 milliliters with part B, and then I didn't have to worry about pouring two separate containers into one, it's just all in one. It does come with this little stick, which I helped stir. You're gonna mix for three minutes straight, and then you will apply it on the rocks. Also, one thing I like about this craft resin is it's, I don't know, got UV protection. I don't really care too much about that, but uh, it's non-toxic, it's odorless, it's not flammable, and it's bubble free. I'll show you how to make it truly bubble free, but I like all of that because, I mean, I'm in kind of a small basement here. So if it had a bunch of fumes, that would be really hard for me to breathe. <laughs> um, so I'm really glad that it is like literally odor free. I didn't smell, I don't think anything when I did it the first time. All right, let's pour part A. And now part B. Time to mix for three minutes. I'll save you the boring part and I'll see you when we're done. 
Would you look at that? We're already done. That was sure a fast three minutes. So now I'm just gonna take the resin with literally this stick and apply it to the faces of all of these rocks. Since it's really important to stir, and if you don't stir it correctly, it'll end up being sticky and never cure, what you really want to do is make sure to avoid any of the edges as you're kind of like dipping into your little cup and the bottom so that you don't pick up parts that maybe weren't stirred for the three minutes or just didn't get stirred enough. Now this is quite difficult to do with one hand, but I will show you what it looks like when we're done with this first rock. So there is what that one looks like now with the resin compared to without the resin. Pretty big difference, I'd say. So let's finish getting resin on all of these and then I'll show you what's next. And just like that, I am done painting on the resin. Now I'm gonna kind of go through this one. Of course, I left that little crystal pocket open because I wasn't gonna be filling that in. Um, but I'm gonna go through and look for any rocks, like see that one? How it looks like I missed a little spot right there. So I'll go through and fix those. Now, as you might imagine, there are a lot of bubbles. If you look close, you can see all of the bubbles on the surface of the resin. Now that, of course, is because we stirred it for three minutes. But there's a fix, and it's a pretty cool one. It's tiny torch time. So we're gonna take our tiny torch, and I'm just going to kind of blow out all of the bubbles. I don't know, heat out all the bubbles? I'm not really sure how I'd say that. One thing I noticed is if you go too close to the rock, it ends up leaving like a little hole in it. So we really don't want that. I'll show you on this one. So, gotta get it started first. Kinda go over it lightly, and you can see those bubbles just popping. And I'll go through and do all of these so that we can get all the little bubbles out. I went through and got all of the bubbles out. Now, I notice on like this one, that one, that one, and that one. So those four, are, well those two I should say, are part of the same rock and then those two are part of the same rock. But I noticed that the resin is like pooling up and I keep trying to take my little thingamabobber here and like spread it back out so that it's nice and even like all these other ones. But for some reason it keeps pooling and I'm not 100% sure why. I thought maybe that they just weren't as level. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. What's up? It's editing Ariel here. Um, okay, I think what I learned is that if the rock's surface is too smooth, the resin is not going to stick to it because it has nothing to like adhere to. So I think those rocks were just like a little bit more smooth than the other ones, especially around the edges. Uh, not 100% sure why those ones would, would be particularly more smooth, but if you want to make sure that you have a very adherable to surface, I would maybe like scuff it up a little bit with some sandpaper. When I do this again next time, that's kind of what I plan to do. And then of course, you know, you might want to wipe that off with like a damp towel so that you don't have any little particles left on it because that's not going to look good for the resin either. But other than those, the rest, I would say, are looking fabulous. But I, really not smartly, poured out all the resin <laughs> already. And I shouldn't have because maybe I could have added more to try to fix these. Um, but I keep trying to pull it off to the sides and it's not working. So I'm gonna try to push it all to the edges again and then torch it with the heater. And if they don't work, then I mean they don't work. It's not the end of the world because the rest of them did. So these will take 24 hours to be hard to the touch. It does say it will take 14 days to be heat resistant, um, but after like 48, I think, or 72 hours, they will be, you know, hard enough to manipulate more than just touch. One of the important factors, it says, is the temperature of your workspace, and that should be between 70 and 75 degrees. The basement is not 70 to 75 degrees, so I'm gonna actually take this tray upstairs with me and put it in one of my warmer rooms to let it harden so that it actually does harden and not just stay liquid. I'll see you in 24 hours. And just like that, we're back. I did put tin foil on the top of this just to prevent any dust from 
getting on our beautiful rocks as they dry. Look at that shine. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Now, the only thing that I was afraid of, <laughs> but we kind of knew going into it was these ones. So I'm debating on if I should do like another layer of resin and see if it'll like settle out or if I just chuck these in the tumbler. Um, I don't know, I'll do one or the other, I think. But the rest, I mean, look at these. Do you see that? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I love like playing with the light like this. It's so pretty. Just look at all that unique detail you can see on there. Do you see? Look at that. That's so cool, from that to that. I love it. And I do have to say that one of my favorites is this one with the gem pocket in there. I mean, look at that. I absolutely love the agate eyes on this one. It is so pretty. Also, this one, doesn't it kind of look like, when you look at it this way, like, <laughs> like an upset face? Like the two eyes and it's got like kind of a wavy mouth. <laughs> I think that's so cool. And now we'll just take them out and get them shipped over to the wonderful subscribers over on Patreon. You will have to let me know if you decide to try this in the future and if you like the idea. I personally love it and think it is so cool. I mean, just look at that difference. Beautiful, dull. Beautiful and shiny, dull. I do love that this method is so much easier, so much quicker, and so much cheaper <laughs> than using a Cab King. Maybe one day I will get one, but I think that this is a great way to start. Also, I have so many. I mean, so many. I mean, so many rocks. <laughs> and I would really like to kind of spread the wealth a little bit. Let me know if you're interested in maybe me putting some of these rocks up on Etsy and just kind of yeah, sharing them with all you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe because there's more where that came from or this came from. There's more where that, there's more where this came from. You know what I mean. Bye!